Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also, welcome back to my brand new updated Vim series here on this channel. In this series, I'm teaching all of you Vim beginners everything you need to know to become productive with Vim. Are you liking the series so far? If you are, then be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV. I have some awesome content coming, not just the remaining episodes in this series. There's a bunch of things coming. So make sure you subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. In the meantime, though, it's time to dive back into Vim. So let's go ahead and switch over to my terminal and learn more about Vim in this episode. So here I am on my terminal and I'm ready to get started and dive back into Vim. I hope you're ready as well. I hope you've had some time to practice the things that I've taught you in previous episodes. Anyway, let's just get started and get back into Vim. Now in the series so far, I kept the explanations fairly simple when it comes to what a buffer actually is. And one of the things that I mentioned is that when we go into Vim, when we open Vim, we always have at least one buffer. I also mentioned earlier in the series that a buffer is essentially a holding area for text. If you think of a standard GUI text editor, there's going to be an empty window that you could type into that's kind of the same thing here we have an empty Vim window and we can start typing. So I could type a sentence like that one into my current buffer. And this buffer is not a file until I save it as a file. Until then, I have this holding area for text. So Vim is going to allow me to type new text. It also allows me to add text from an existing file. So in the previous episode, what I did was I used colon to go into command mode r for read, and the Samba config file, this one right here, is in my home directory. So what I was able to do was grab the contents of that file and put that in our current buffer. And one thing to note about this is that that file isn't actually open. I opened up Vim with no file name given as an argument, so I started with an empty buffer, and then in this buffer, I grabbed the text from that file and inserted it into my current buffer. We've been working with buffers for a long time, it's just we've only been working with one buffer, and by doing so, that kind of abstracts some of the usefulness of buffers in general. So let's expand on that right now. So what I'm going to do is quit out of this, I'll do colon, again that's command mode, Q and then exclamation mark to quit without saving changes. And now I'm back to the command line. Now again, I have those three files right there. I'm just using Samba config files again as an example, but it really doesn't matter. But what I want to do is open up one of these files. So I'll open up the Samba config file again, and I'll open it straight away. And now we are using Vim with a buffer that includes the contents of that config file. Now that we have this file open, or at least the contents of the Samba config file open in our current buffer, we can start working on editing this file. As you already know, if we want to save changes, we're going to overwrite that file. But what I just showed you in this series is that you can add text in your current buffer from a file by going into command mode. But first we have to move the cursor where we want the text to appear. Anyway, command mode, as you've already seen, we had shares.conf, that's another of the files. And what happened is the contents of that file ended up appearing where my cursor happens to be. I'll undo that change, and I'll show you another way of doing this, something that I think will make buffers make more sense, or at the very least, you'll understand how they could be more useful. So before, I entered this command right here in command mode to open that file, but what I'm going to do instead is change the R to an E, E for edit. I want to edit that file right there, but what's going to happen? Well, I'll press enter, and let's find out. So now I have the shares config file open, and I'll scroll through here, but I don't have anything else but what's in that particular file. So my current buffer contains only the contents of the shares config file. But whatever happened to that original buffer? Well, here's where everything starts to make sense. I'll go to command mode, and then I'll type BP for buffer previous, and then I'll press enter, and there's the original file. Then I can switch to the next file by typing colon, and then in command mode, buffer next, and that takes me to the other file. 
There's also a third file in my home directory, so let's use that as another example. I have two buffers open right now, so we'll use that to create a third buffer. And it's going to be the exact same thing again. We're just going to use E in command mode. And updated file.txt was the one that I've created earlier in the series. And I was also able to use tab completion. I didn't have to type the entire name. I just needed to type a few characters of it. And then I pressed tab and it completed the name for me. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, I'll enter that. And now we have that file, which was just a combination of the other two files. As you can see, it has the contents of both right here. So now what I could do is type colon, and then in command mode, buffer next. And I could keep entering buffer next over and over again. And when I get to the last buffer that's open, it's just going to circle back to the original one. So you could just do bn over and over and over again. And you could also do colon bp for buffer previous. And now we're at the previous buffer. Previous, back to the first one and bn for buffer next, you get the idea. But how do I go about adding an empty buffer? What if I want a fourth buffer, but I don't want anything inside of it? What I could do is create yet another buffer using the contents of an existing file, but I don't wanna do that. I want to create an empty buffer without having to do all that work. So what I can do in command mode, I could type e new, basically edit new. I want to edit a new buffer. And then when I press enter, I have an empty buffer. Here's the previous buffer. And here's the next one. I keep going and going. But wait a minute, what happened to that new buffer? Well, I didn't add any text to that buffer, so it went away as soon as I switched off of it. So let's try that one more time. Again, E new or edit new. And then I'll type, this is a test. So we have a buffer right there. And it's not going to allow me to switch to another buffer. Why? Well, because there's changes that haven't been saved. So that's something that you'll run into. So let's just go ahead and save this file right now. So colon W, and since we're saving it for the very first time, we need to give it a file name. So I'll give it that file name. And now it's saved. And as I go through the buffers here, and cycle through them, then this new buffer will be among them. So at this point, I showed you multiple ways of opening buffers. You can open up a new one if you want to. You could also grab text from an existing file and use that to open up a buffer. And you can switch between the buffers as well. So I recommend that you just practice this for a bit because we're going to go into more detail later on in the series. In particular, what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at splits or having multiple files open in the same window without having to switch back and forth. And that's going to help us understand buffers even more. And with that, another episode in my Vim series comes to a close. Thank you so much for checking out this series so far. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to support Learn Linux TV even further, then please consider going to support.learnlinux.tv where you can find all kinds of ways that you can help the channel. Among them, you could become a patron or a channel member, and I'd really appreciate that. Either way, the next episode should be uploaded very soon if it isn't already. So as soon as you're ready for that, then I'll meet you in that episode. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode.